Um, so I first met Aaron in 2001, uh, when Aaron was, I guess, um, 14, and was already a, a leading light um, working with Tim Berners-Lee uh, on, uh, on the project to, that, that we know as the semantic web, an incredibly ambitious idea to encode in, uh, in machine-readable form all of the, the world's knowledge. And of course, being a journalist at the time, um, I, I seized on this opportunity to sneak an explanation of the semantic web past my editor. Um, it's almost impossible to get any editor to understand the semantic web, but the idea of a 14-year-old boy helping Tim Berners-Lee um, will always pass muster, even if they don't know who Tim Berners-Lee is. Um, the editor, of course, is in charge of titling the article, and with that supreme lack of understanding, he actually titled it um, A Teenager in a Million, which, of course, was to miss the point entirely. Um, the point was that Aaron's age wasn't a particularly unique thing, and Aaron himself wasn't the exceptional part of this. The exceptional part of this was an institution that allowed someone like Aaron to walk in through its door, and before anyone had noticed where he came from, or what age he was, or what his background was, they allowed him to start contributing good work and learning from his, his peers. Um, an institution is not truly open until somebody you could never even imagine exists walks through the door. Um, when Tim Berners-Lee described these moments um, at, at Aaron's funeral uh, a week ago, you, you, you could see in a way that only Tim Berners-Lee can convey the sort of glee he had that at last this system was working. These open mailing lists, this open discussion, this exchange of information was bringing new people into building the web. He told me then, I was worried about revealing my age and I did my best to keep it a secret. Now I let my words speak for themselves. And since then, so many words. Some written in machine-readable form in Python for computers, some written in brimstone and sulfur for Congress-readable forms, um, and all of it in plain text, all of it in plain language for everyone to read. And if he could not read enough words himself, uh, his programs read and scraped and passed the rest. Aaron loved beautiful code. I think the only time I really ever pained him was when I'd said some program that he'd written and I'd looked at was unreadable. Uh, it turned out that it wasn't actually his code at all. He'd, uh, he'd written some code that had in turn written that code. <laughs> and, and yet I think it still hurt that, that, that somehow his, his own child had not inherited his own delicate sensitivities. Words fail, fail me now, even though I have them written down here. I mean, try as hard as Aaron did. I, I don't think you could ever encode all of his experience in words. And I don't think that all of the relationships that he built between so many different peers and so many new people coming in could be ever expressed in any number of RDF triplets. I, I mean, I can, I can sort of try and convey the, 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 the look on Aaron's face when he, he played with my daughter Aaron, um, nine. There were some pictures downstairs that you may have seen. Um, but you can't really convey that childish glee that most of us lose, well, long before we begin work on the semantic web, at least. Um, and I can't really describe to you the, 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 the pain and frustration when Aaron so effectively demolished a defense I had of John Searle's Chinese room argument that I actually picked, threw down my, my knife and fork and stormed out of my own chi uh, Christmas dinner. Um, <laughs> leave, leaving, of course, the turkey for Aaron to fail to eat. Um, there was always a sort of pleasure and ease in, in forgiving Aaron for those sort of arguments and also to watch him so easily forgive the rest of us. And I don't think any, any archive can, can hold those moments. But if I can share with you some code, if I can't, can't share with you the code that made up Aaron, I can, I hope, share with you the code that Aaron believed could make more Aaron's. Aaron became Aaron because of his unfettered access to information and the knowledge and sharing of, of his peers. Uh, he was very lucky in that respect. He had an incredibly loving family who, um, who, who supported him, who would pay for him to fly out to meetings. Uh, he had a computer. He had all the privileges and benefits that being a young man in the United States of America in the end of the 20th century have. But he also had something new. 
he had a new advantage, which was that the, the, the gates of the construction of this technology that was beginning to share information were beginning to open up. And he was one of the first, yes, the youngest, but one of the first to take advantage of that and use his curiosity and his, his drive even at that age to nip in through there and begin sharing almost immediately with his peers. And if anything bound together all of Aaron's crusades, it was his belief that he was not alone in this. He was not exceptional, and he believed he was not unique, and that there were more than him out there with his curiosity and talent. People say, when we talked about Aaron's work of taking the content of academic papers or the content of the US legal system and opening it up for anyone to use and see and crunch and peruse. Um, uh, you know, who, who really is this for? Who, who wants to know about the legal system can't in some way ask a friend or a contact to get access to, to, um, to PACER? Who, who really has a craving for academic knowledge can't find somebody and sneak their way into MIT or another institution and just get that information or, or work to access it? And those people forget. Uh, they forget that if Aaron was a teenager in a million, that soon, very soon, as we continue the great work that we're indulged in here, that there will be six billion people that we will connect to the world's information networks. And out of those six billion people, there will be 1.2 billion teenagers. And if my editor's statistics are correct, and he never understood statistics either, um, then there will be 1,200 errands out there. There are 1,200 errands out there right now who are as smart and engaged and as curious and as driven as Aaron was, but they simply don't have access to that information. Um, there is no closed archives, no carefully guarded ivory tower that can seat billions. But the open society, the open and world wide web, the free culture that Aaron worked for is for all of those people. And if we give them what they need, if we give them the knowledge to feed their curiosity and the care that we must never forget they need, that, that, that amazing sort of resource of, of, of future errands from Kibera, from Gangzhou or Asan, all of those people will come and they will build the kind of things that Aaron was dreaming of. And so even though we've, we've, we've lost one Aaron, we do have a potential, by continuing his work, to find so many more. Aaron told me back in 2001 that one of the things that the web teaches us is that everything is connected, hyperlinks, and that we should all work together, standards. Too often school teaches us that everything is separate and that we should all work alone. I think one of the many, many tragedies of, of, of the situation that we find ourselves in now is that at least in some moment of Aaron's life, his belief that he was not alone failed him. And for a few moments, he believed himself to be alone. And I'm sure out there, there are many, many 14-year-old children who feel the same way, that they have that binding curiosity, that fascination, and that urge to change the world. And they worry for a moment that it's just them, that they're alone. And there are no tools and no capabilities and no friends to help them continue in that path. I don't think it's ever too soon to begin working with the rest of the world. And I think we all need to stay together and never, ever again leave our friends too alone. A boy's will is the wind's will. And the thoughts of youth are long, long thoughts. <laughs>